here we go. This here, is how it starts. Here we go. And I today want to ask you a simple question, okay? Mm -hmm. And I told you this because I don't think you're very good sometimes at tackling things from a non-emotional space. It's the not, Rock also found out you're not good at tackling things from a non-emotional space. It's not me. No, it's not. And that's part of your charm. Yes. But I told you after WrestleMania 39, give it time. Not only will Cody not suffer after he's lost to Roman Reigns, he'll actually do better. And you remember right after WrestleMania 39, you were you were the king of the Cody Crybabies after 39. A year ago, you were Cody Crybaby. I was OG. I'm an OG <laughs> Cody Crybaby. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I remember you. You are going on Busted Open. We were having conversations about it. And you were talking about the fact. You said, you kidding me? Next year, WrestleMania <laughs> is in Philly? Philly's going to boo this guy out of the building. To start this, Dave, can you admit, whether they stumbled into it or not, Cody is in a better place today than he was going into WrestleMania last year. A thousand percent. Okay. I couldn't be more wrong. It was emotional. I get a lot of flack, Sam, and you know this. I get a lot of flack for being emotional, for being passionate. You're more of an idea guy. You let it unfold. You're patient. I'm not patient. My degree is in sociology. There you go. There you go. So you understand it from a formulaic level, mm -hmm. what was happening right after WrestleMania 39. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm very, very passionate. So I, I do it on an emotional level. And But looking back now, obviously, Sam, you were right. Bully was right. Tommy was right. Mark was right. <laughs> There's a laundry list of people that kind of talked me off the ledge. But let me let me just circle back. Could you at least understand why? I was so emotional like I was. I did understand why. And I think that a lot of it also has to do with uh, history and, and what has previously happened. Exactly. WWE yes. coming out of the John Cena era, coming out of the previous Roman Reigns era, where it was just like there is sometimes no rhyme or reason. John Cena is going to beat the Nexus. And that's it. He's just going to beat the Nexus. Like, it's like you had this great story, and then you just completely destroyed it. Boom. Just dropped the bomb on it. Boom. You know, it could be the next Damien Sandow, where everybody's talking about Damien Sandow. He cashes in, you know, cashes in the money in the bank against Cena, loses on Monday Night Raw, and that's it. Boom. Done. Drop the bomb. Bray Wyatt, WrestleMania 30. Done after that. It should have been so much more than what it was. We saw it time and time and time again. And I guess I didn't really in, usher in that new era in my brain and in my art. I was still thinking this was an era gone by. And this is a new era right now. Yeah, and I would argue that this era started at WrestleMania 38. That if you really look at when things changed and that sort of storytelling that you can depend on, as well as those moments, Cody returning is the beginning of this era. Today. Yes. And it's not just Cody's story. It's it's the way Cody returned and, and the fan service that we received. Ironically, the beginning of this era is Cody returning to the WWE and Roman Reigns very controversially unifying those two titles. There's a lot. First of all, you mentioned Cody Rhodes. And as everyone knows, because I've been wearing nothing but Cody gear... <laughs> Since after the Royal Rumble. Um, which you paid full price for. <laughs> which I paid full price for. Each and every one. Yeah. Nothing was handed to me. I paid for everything. But I feel like you can look over the last 10 years. The most influential wrestler is Cody Rhodes. When you look at... In the last 10 years, Cody Rhodes is the most influential wrestler. Yes. Influential, not popular. Influential. You look at, you look at him leaving the WWE betting on himself, forming AEW, what happened with AEW once Cody left that structure of AEW, and then look at what the WWE business-wise has been able to do since he's come back. And like you just said, it started with Cody at WrestleMania 38 and ushered in somewhat this new era. I think you look back at the last 10 years and it's going to have Cody, Cody Rhodes' stamp of approval over 
what we've seen over the last 10 years in pro wrestling completely changed the landscape, changed everyone's mind about pro wrestling and what it's going to be moving forward. That's just my take. You don't think The Rock made it cool again? I think The Rock made it cool again. There's no <laughs> doubt. Listen, I'm, I'm giving. But what, I'm, but what about this? Okay. When you're talking about influence, because you're, you're 100% right about Cody, right? And especially the way he left, the way he worked outside of WWE, the way he came back. He made a blueprint of what yep. you can do in order to succeed and threw away the old blueprint and then started a new one. You could argue Sean Spears followed that. You could argue Matt Cardona followed that. Yes. You could argue there's a ton of people that you could argue. You also look at the return and the way Cody came back into WWE, that blueprint, I think was followed by Jade Cargill. I think it's going to be followed by a lot of other people. But in turn... We, what we were just talking about was storytelling and faith in storytelling. When you talk about what was the story that changed that, the bloodline storyline is as if not more influential to the way WWE specifically, industry-wide, okay, but WWE specifically, telling stories and, and changing it so abruptly I don't think that there's anything more influential in that than the bloodline. Sam, I'm going to say this, and this may surprise you. Okay. I think the bloodline story is the <gasps> best story that since I've been watching pro wrestling. Whoa, and you've been watching pro wrestling over 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> over 60 years. This is going back to the original gotch. Hey, I'm talking like... When my dad would take me to the matches and, and 19, see the, the gold and, dust trio in 1948. <laughs> okay. When we, my dad would take me to the carnivals. I remember back in the you day. told me when I first met you, when I was growing up, my favorite wrestler, Toots Monk. <laughs> Dude, I'm talking a boy, the first wrestler to use a foreign object in a ring. He used uh -huh. that. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> That's right. Going back to then. That's right. This is the best story. Wow. And in, in all honesty, wow. I've been watching wrestling now since 1981. Wow. So you're going on 43 years that I've been watching pro wrestling. This is the best story. Think about the length of time. How many people have gotten over from this story? That's key. And it's not over yet. Mm -mm. And it's selling out arenas now whether you want to put it on roman or jay uso or the rock it doesn't matter they're selling out arenas how everywhere about, they go how about this one yeah the rock has has made a huge impact on business the rock's not back if the bloodline and roman reigns didn't set this up for him the rock isn't coming into he's not coming back into a wwe god bless him where the Miz is the champion. No, that's it's not, not happening. It's, it's not, not WrestleMania happening. 27. He's coming back. Let's not pretend that the product wasn't already white hot because of everything that's been going on. And it's not just the bloodline, obviously. It's it's Cody Rhodes. It's people like LA Knight and Jey Uso and Sami Zayn all kind of ascending to that main event level. But But I would say that if you really look at that long term... That, yeah, The Rock is going to draw eyeballs. But the reason The Rock is drawing eyeballs is because he's surrounded he's surrounded by Seth Rollins doing the best mic work of his career. He's he's enwrapped in a story about the bloodline. Seth Rollins is doing the best mic work of his career. On Monday Night Raw, I disagree, but that's... With Drew? No, I'm, I'm talking with Seth Rollins. No, no, no. What about, what about the back and forths with Drew? D Drew is doing the best mic work wow. of his career. Seth Rollins. Wow. On when I like serious Seth Rollins, like we saw on SmackDown, the Seth Rollins we sometimes see on Raw. I'm not a big fan of, but that's not. Are you that's specifically not a talking about Diarrhea Dwayne? Specifically. It's a big, it's a big dent. <laughs> it's a big dent. It's a big dent in your argument, if you're asking. <laughs> okay. It's one night. It was one night. It was one night. It's a big dent in the argument. But but you you have to throw him in on on this too. So if you're talking about a storyline that is so powerful that it convinced The Rock to come back, not just because there was a time when The Rock was like, yeah, I'm going to come back because I'm going to put my stamp on this. I'm going to raise it up. 
The Rock is coming back, I believe, right now because he's going to be able to benefit the company, but the company's going to be able to benefit him as well. This is a really good time to be associated with WWE. I would give Roman Reigns a lot of credit for that. And, of course. And, and put him into that space of, if that's the case, couldn't you say that Roman and Paul Heyman and the bloodline is the most influential act over the last 10 years? That's the, the argument could be had. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the blueprint Cody set mm -hmm. for him as an individual and how it really has changed the landscape even outside of the WWE. Mm -hmm. But you're right about Roman and Paul Heyman and the bloodline story. As I said, I, I can't give it any more credit than I already did by saying I think it's the best story that I have seen. And as that's a wild that you fan. said that, right? Because all joking aside, it's one thing to say it's the best WWE story, which already you're talking about Undertaker and Kane. You're talking about the mega powers collide. You're talking yes. about Hogan and Andre, which as big a, a, a moment as Hogan and Andre was, the build to that match was impeccable. It was amazing. But you're also, because you're an NWA guy, you're not a sports entertainment guy. You're a wrestling I guy. I am. I'm an old you school like wrestling. wrestling. I love wrestling. <laughs> I'm a wrestling guy. And now we're getting into the horsemen. Now we're getting into Dusty Rhodes. Yes. Now we're getting into war games. Yes. And I love that period. Yeah. And I love the four horsemen. I love Flair. Flair is my all-time favorite. You know that. But I, I, and I've said this before, I said it on Busted Open. I watched WrestleMania 3 on closed circuit TV at William Patterson College Rec Center in Wayne, 30. New Jersey. You were 30 years old. Not that old, oh, Sam. Okay. All right. All Sorry. Right. Not that old. All right. I may look it. Yeah. But those are that. the failed marriages that have <laughs> warned me, that will have warned me over time. <laughs> but when I walked into the Rec Center to watch WrestleMania 3 on closed circuit TV, I pretty much knew that Hogan was going to slam Andre mm. and beat Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 3. I can almost guarantee it. Whatever paper route money I had in my pocket, I would put it all on the table and say, Hogan's going to slam Andre. Hogan is going to beat Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 3. With this story, Sam, I, I honestly don't know... Forget about what's going to happen at WrestleMania 4. I don't know what's going to happen Friday. I don't right. know what's going to happen on Monday. I have. When's the last time you've been able to say that about the WWF slash WWE? I don't. I don't recall a time when this much was left open. A time when like it was this necessary after every show to have a conversation about it, to dissect it, mm -hmm. to go like, oh, that. What about this wrinkle? What about that wrinkle? To the point. And this could be another conversation to have where while there's plenty of evidence of the quote unquote pivot that the WWE was like, ooh, we wanted to do Rock Roman, but now we have to pivot because the fans didn't like it. There's also evidence of the reverse. Like you can't even say concretely, you can guess, but you can't say with factuality, yeah, 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 this is just like WrestleMania 30. Because it's not, and even WrestleMania 30. As big as it was, as cool as it was, there was never a chance that you were leaving New Orleans without Daniel Bryan you knew getting it. You his just moment. knew it. It was, and especially where that was, the main event. There's no way you weren't going to get that moment. And when it comes to the Rock, and I know you hate it, you've said it on this show many times. Um, pivot that you hate that word. Pivot. Hate the word. Hate pivot. the word. Dumb. Pivot. And especially in a negative connotation. Like I'll use the word audible. Uh huh. You know, maybe they called an audible, maybe. which is they looked at the landscape and they said, all right, we, we got to do something a little bit different here. That's awesome. That's great. It's what that you mean, should do. That way, exactly. The, the worst thing you could do is like, this is the plan. We're going to follow this plan and this is the way it's going to go. And it doesn't matter if the audience wants to go on the ride with us or not. This is where we're going to go. No, you. sometimes you have to change. What do all the legends of the ring say? What, they call it in the ring, That's right? That's it. Call it in the ring because you don't know how the crowd's going to react that night or whatever is going to happen. Same thing here. I really feel like you couldn't ask for better players than the players that are involved in this. That, and that includes Paul Heyman, The Rock, Cody. They have such a passion and love mm -hmm. for this industry mm -hmm. that they're willing to, hey, if we have to change something, whatever the goal was, let's move the goalpost because... This is what's best for business, and this is what's best for the story. That's why this story has so many layers to it. Yeah. 
It's yeah. so great. It's yeah. so great, Sam. That said, there's only so much time that you can call an audible. Because what's happened is you've set up this dream scenario where you're going into WrestleMania. And even if even if you want Cody to win or you want Roman to win, there's no way that you can walk in going like, oh, yeah, I know. Like, clearly Cody's going to win or clearly Roman's going to win. Because as difficult for me, I've gotten to the point where as difficult as it is to believe that Cody's going to lose again, it's more difficult for me to believe that that universal title exists without Roman Reigns. That it's been redefined to an extent. And the idea of no, no, Roman will always break your heart. Every dream you have, Roman's here to crush it. Whether it's a triple threat match, whether it's double titles, whether it's Cody Rhodes finishing the story at WrestleMania, Roman is built, and we've never seen it before in WWE, because as you know, growing up, what happens at WrestleMania? The good guy wins. Yep. Who long-term champions in WWE? The good guys. It's always. It's a babyface company. Not anymore. No, it's not. Not anymore. The biggest star, the biggest champion, the one that everybody's talking about, the one that nobody can beat, is a villain. So it has, in fact, changed the face and the shape of what the company is. Which means, if Roman's not the champion, what is that title and what is WWE? And it's also like, how far can we go? How right. much further can we take with this? Like, we're seeing him pass all these legends at a time, Sam, where it's like, nobody holds the title for that long anymore. And then all of a sudden, he's passing all these legends, legend after legend. Now you're in the top three. Now you got the top three there. What's to say, let's let's get let's pass Hogan. Why not? Do you think that that's because this is a conversation that's been coming up a lot. There's so much momentum behind Cody more this year than last year. And I think it's because people feel like there's an actual reason to fight last year. I thought it was a good idea for Cody to lose because I thought he hadn't lost anything like he'd been handed everything. And that is the exact character that eventually the fans turn on because there's not that thing to support anymore. This is different now, because not only has he lost a few times, one being WrestleMania, yeah, yeah. but there's a very real possibility he's going to lose at WrestleMania again. So people have something to cheer for. Do you think that there is a risk? Because you go like, okay, well, if he loses again, the story's over, and this was all for nothing. But if he wins, the story's also over. Do it, you think there is a risk that once the story is over, and I would argue that the story is more over, the story is more finished if he wins than if he loses. If he loses, there's always that hope maybe he wins money in the bank and the story goes on and the story goes on and the story goes on. But when he wins, that's the end of the book. We're starting a new book. That is 1,000% the end of the story and that's not the thing that he's been fighting for since he came back at 38 is done. It's no more. Do you think that there is a risk that when that story is over, should he become the champion, he doesn't have that thing anymore? You know what movie I like more than The Godfather, Sam? No. Godfather 2. You know what movie I like more than Star Wars? The Empire Strikes Back. You, you, know, what, you know what movie I like less than Godfather 2? Godfather 3. <laughs> I think Go everybody ahead. I think everybody would agree on that. <laughs> I think everybody would agree on that. But I really feel if Cody wins and finishes the story, it's just one story. There's going it's all about the follow-up. What hurt, you know, Daniel Bryan after WrestleMania 30? What was the follow-up right. after that moment? What's the follow-up? There's so many different options for Cody once WrestleMania 40 is over. I mean, think about it. The slap on Monday Night Raw, the slap at the press conference, that was between Cody and Rock, mm. not Cody and Roman. I feel like you can go in two different directions with Roman and with Cody. I think with Roman, it's it's more, it's something that's even bigger than that undisputed WWE Universal Championship. It's the head of the table. Mm. I think being the head of the table is more important than that championship. And those are two different things. But are they? I mean, can does 
I've argued that the head of the table doesn't exist without the title because the head of the table from the beginning of being defined that way was predicated upon being the breadwinner, not just of the Samoan dynasty, but of the whole show. When Roman, the camera's mine, the ring's mine. Those commentators are here for me. All these fans, these are mine. This whole thing is mine. That is what defines the head of the table which also means you're the top guy. And if somebody else is the champion, how do you make the argument that the whole place is yours if you're not even the champion? You can't, but then that's a place for somebody to step up and say, you know what, I acknowledged you as the head of the table, but you're not the head of the table because the head of the table never would have lost that undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Who are you talking about, Dave? I'm talking about The Rock. Oh. And that's when The Rock says... Yep. Now, okay, well, okay, well, okay, but that's a problem still, I think, because you just painted a beautiful story of The Rock and Roman Reigns coming out of WrestleMania. How does, what's left for Cody to conquer? What is left for Cody to conquer if he were to beat the unbeatable, which is Roman Reigns, and he is the champion? What's left for him to conquer? It's maybe not about conquering because I think with Cody, it is about the past. It is about history. It is about his family. Obviously, he wants to win that WWE championship because of his dad. His dad was never able to win that world championship. I heard. Yes, we we hear it. <laughs> we hear it a lot. We hear it a lot. But also, who's somebody that maybe was the biggest influence uh, on him in his career, in Cody's career? Randy Orton? Randy Orton. Let me ask you, Sam. If you come out of WrestleMania 40 with a program between The Rock and Roman. Okay. And Cody and Randy Orton. I'm telling you. You know what I'm telling you? One of them's a main event and the other is secondary. But you know what? And what I just heard was you set up a scenario where the guy who finished the story and the guy who beat Roman Reigns and the guy who made all of his and his dad's dreams come true as we move on is CM Punk is the world champion while John Cena is still main eventing. Okay. Because if I'm going to a show, I'm paying for a ticket to see The Rock versus Roman Reigns and going, oh, and that's great. Randy Orton versus Cody's on the undercard. And I don't think that's what you want. All right. Well, I, it's all going to come to WrestleMania 41. <laughs> oh, right. when, it, when, it's, when it's Cody versus The Rock <laughs> for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Listen, there's a million different ways that it could play out. All I'm going to say is this. We've seen people finish their story, become a champion, and then there not be a story on the other side. Yes. I feel, and and we're just spitball. Me and you are just spitballing here. We're just spitballing here. But imagine, you know, if we were able to sit down, you and I, yeah. and come up with a long-range plan for the next 12 months coming out of WrestleMania 40 for the WWE. There's a lot of different scenarios, and they all work. And, by the way, we're not even talking about the World Championship, and we're not even talking about the Intercontinental Championship or the Raw Women's Championship and the SmackDown Women's Championship. Or all these other titles that with the WWE, which not that long ago were meaningless, and now all of them have meaning. They all do have meaning, but it's really interesting. Something's happened on the road to WrestleMania, and obviously this could be corrected, but so much was set up already this year as potential things that we'll see in the future, and I'm sure we'll see them all. Seth and Punk, Drew and Punk, Cody and Punk. Cody and Punk having that moment. Yes was incredible. Cody and Seth yes. having a return program. But everybody except Drew that I just mentioned have all become good guys. None of them are villains. And it's almost like, I mean, there are people who don't think Seth should turn. I can't imagine Punk turning at this point. And Cody's not turning. So it's almost like you've got this row of some of the best good guys that you've ever had. And in order to satiate that, you kind of need an unconquerable foe. No? It's it, it falls in line with that. 
you're right. If you're going to have that murder, it's the opposite of the Heenan family. Right. Like you had Hogan and then the Heenan family, he would set up all these opponents for Hulk Hogan. Now you have it in reverse. You're setting up all these baby faces to ultimately face Roman Reigns and lose. Right. It's, right. It's a and crazy yeah. dynamic <laughs> yes. when you think about it. Exactly. And the fact that, like, if you really think about it, in the moment, it makes sense. Of course, everybody wants to see Cody win at WrestleMania. But at the same time, who's got bigger matches as a world champion, potentially, coming out of WrestleMania? It's Roman. Roman. It's Roman. It's Roman. But I just... This is where, and this is something I have not done for a very long time, Sam, mm -hmm. is where I, I am going to give my confidence mm -hmm. to WWE creative here. Like, Just, So you're it, saying you're going to let him cook? It, I'm going to let him cook. And since Triple H has taken over, and that SummerSlam was like that definitive event where from that moment forward, right. it was really like Triple H's like... The damage control SummerSlam. Yes. Yes. And then, and then it's funny. The next month was the, the the brawl out of All Out in yeah. Chicago. That was a month later after after that's, SummerSlam. That's nuts that those that, two things crossed, yeah. and it's just the worst timing. I, worst timing slash best timing, depending on where you're sitting. I and I don't mean to get off topic here, but I remember going because I was at All Out in Chicago, and I remember going and and thinking to myself, man. AEW has got to hit a home run here because the WWE is doing things right. AEW was the alternative to the WWE. Why? Because people are just like fed up with the WWE, the creative with the WWE. It just felt like you're not going anywhere. Well, now Triple H is in charge and the exact opposite is happening to the WWE. And I was like, man, going into Chicago, I was like, AEW has got to make a statement here. They got to hit a home run. And the worst possible scenario well, they, happened coming they, out of that. They did hit a home run. The pay-per-view was very the pay -per -view, good. But nobody was talking about the pay-per-view the next to day. To this day, nobody remembers it. And and the other thing is, it's the same thing with All In and at Wembley. Like, yeah. here is, you have a record-setting crowd. What a feel-good moment for this new company. And, and kudos to AEW. A company that's only been around less than five years is able to draw, you know, 75, 80,000 people for a wrestling event. That's unheard of, Sam. But what were we talking about the next day? We were talking about CM Punk. You know what that tells you? Don't let MJF have a hot angle at the end of a show. <laughs> like it's, it's, and, and, and you know, now hopefully AEW can heat up again. And, and I, they're really missing MJF for sure. Yeah. Uh, but that, you, you just said it, that it crossed. That was, that was a, a crazy, like, you know, 30 days for pro wrestling. I think Cody and Seth have to lose. I don't see any scenario. Oh, they have to. They have to lose. They right? have to. Though, I mean, there is a way that they could give you a, you know, going back to the Wicker Man, a false sense of security where it's like, all right, you know what? Cody won. He could go to WrestleMania night number two. He doesn't have any worries. He's got no way. They don't have to worry about outside interference, right? Like, and then everybody's like, yeah, we don't have to worry about the bloodline. There's no way there's going to be any kind of interference. They could give, they could hoodwink and you here. Of all times, finally, Roman wins clean. Oh my God. <laughs> it's WrestleMania. I'm so glad you brought up the Wicker Man because I'm just, I just, when you said that, I started putting the pieces together. The Wicker Man, this poster is here in my studio. It's one of my favorite movies ever because it, it's, it's very, very weird. Right, and you're never quite sure what's going on. And you think you might get a happy ending. And at the very end of the movie, you realize not only are you not getting a happy ending, but from the very start, there was never a hope of a happy ending. And, and this story, they could tell this story where it's like, yeah, how did you not see that? Right. How did you not see that? It's right there in front of you. That parallel is the first time I've been able to... People go, why do you... Sam... Why do you keep saying you think Roman Reigns should win? You want Roman Reigns to win. You know how upset people will be. Yeah, but The Wicker Man's my favorite movie. The Wicker Man. It's my favorite movie. Like, 30, WrestleMania 39, people literally, they were like, 
I'll bet they changed that day of. I'll bet they day of, because Cody was supposed to win. It was never going to happen. It was never going to happen. And what if with all this conversation, we're going to WrestleMania 40? It was never going to happen. Roman's not losing the title. Like, that's the part that we forget, I think, sometimes. We get so caught up in the, in the, in the micro sense, in the story that's happening right now, that we forget about the larger story. And the larger story ends, Roman wins. That's the larger story. Roman's the champ. And he keeps being the champ. You just said, we're at this historical precipice where Roman is the fourth longest reigning WWE champion. Yes. This year, this calendar year, he has the opportunity to be the third longest reigning champion. Yes. And there are people that will say, well, that's not really a record because it's not the top. That's ridiculous. Of course, it's still, it's not the record. It's still a record. They'll say, well, no, because that's the universal type. Okay, with the semantics, we know what we're dealing with. But most importantly, there are people that are like, well, nobody cares. No? Because I'm pretty sure that I saw a huge deal made out of the fact that Roman Reigns held that title for a thousand days. They they did how many vignettes? How, how many merch? videos? Like they had all track suits stuff, that said a thousand. You know, and he keeps hitting landmark after landmark after land. I mean, honest to God, Sam, did you ever think there would be a day where a champion could surpass Hulk Hogan? No, no absolutely not, because I thought it was a bygone era. I said, we don't do that anymore. That's not wrestling anymore. Like, that's never going to happen like even when you would have that conversation about is stone cold a bigger star than hulk hogan we would have that conversation as the attitude era went yeah. on but you'd go yeah like he's selling more shirts and he's more famous but it's a, but it's a different era and it's also more about the whole space that stone cold is in hulk hogan is still kind of untouchable. Yeah, and, and, and there's an era that it relates to. And I'll, and I'll bring it back to the world of the NFL. There's the NFL before the first Super Bowl, and then there's the NFL after the Super Bowl started. Like, you know, the Cleveland Browns won plenty of NFL championships, but nobody remembers that because that's a from an era that's forgotten about because really a lot of people look at it from what they can actually rule and have metrics to, and that's the Super Bowl. You know, how many Super Bowls have the Cleveland Browns won? They haven't won any. They've ever been to a Super Bowl. So all those championships, that almost feels like mythology at this point. So mm -hmm. it's so long ago. Yes. Because what is the NFL measured by? How many Super Bowls have you won? But what if you had a team that not only surpassed Super Bowls, like to the point where the whole Super Bowl era, yeah, you got to give it to that team. But now we're going Back to where before it was Super Bowls. But you don't even have to, Sam, because once Roman Reigns passes Hogan. Right. That's the WrestleMania era. That's it. That's it. Like Backland and Bruno San Martino, that's like the Cleveland Browns winning NFL right. championships before the Super Bowl. Right. Like all like and and like you said, that's in grasp. That's there. We could see it coming. We could see that day coming. It's this calendar year. But but you're right about the fact that Bruno San Martino and Bob Backlund's records, it wasn't even wrestling as we know it. It wasn't what we know wrestling to be now. Hulk Hogan was the beginning of wrestling as we know it today, of WWE. Like I mean, you would today. say, and I would say this too, there's the world of pro wrestling after WrestleMania and the yes. world of pro wrestling before WrestleMania. 100%. So even if like Roman's the longest reigning champion in the WrestleMania era, that's all people are going to think about. Cause that's, that's a scale of 40 years. Right. So you're telling me we need to go back over 40 years over to 40 have the conversation, to have like, that conversation about like once Roman surpasses Hogan, in the world of the WWE, WWF slash WWWF, Roman's on that Mount Rushmore now. Yes. He's on that Mount. He's one of those four faces of the greatest of all time. Because he's done the impossible. Like, there was a, a, a time, and it still exists, where you wanted your stars to measure up to the stars of old. So what did you do? You tried to get them multiple reigns. You tried to get them closer and closer and closer to that 16 mark to that flare mark, because that was the only goal yes. in sight. 
try to get the title on Cena as many times, Orton as many times, Charlotte as many times. Because the idea of somebody going past the Hogan run of a single reign that lasted that long, it doesn't happen anymore. And that's completely changed. And you'll never have a shot at it again. Never. You won't. So, are we not going to wait until August? But that's... I, I, that's the argument. And by the so, way, and, and by the way, I believe if you look at the calendar, it's actually late August, which means it's not SummerSlam, it's Bash in Berlin. For the record, okay. people go, we got to get to SummerSlam. No, and I don't know if Roman's even going to wrestle at Bash in Berlin. Maybe you can go to SummerSlam if he's not going to wrestle in Berlin, then it is SummerSlam. But there is te technically, I believe, the last pay per view on that calendar is the end of August, Bash in Berlin. I think I'm going to go to Bash in Berlin. Really? Yeah. See Roman defend the title? Well, my wife wants a trip to Poland. So what better way than, as I always do. It's perfect. <laughs> it's just coincide the trip to Poland to see if we August can do 31st. We should see if Berlin. we can do a not seeing a busted open live show in Berlin to see if we can get the trip covered. <laughs> you know what? That's an even better idea, Sam. Yeah, at least um, write it off. But think about it. You just said right here on this show. You're like about Cody winning and how people are going to walk in there thinking that Cody is definitely going to win at WrestleMania 40. But now you just said everything you just said. Now people are going to be like, oh, wait a second. Right, right. And all the opponents that we were just talking about for Cody Rhodes. What if after WrestleMania, first of all, what if after WrestleMania, The Rock, what if Roman turns on The Rock? What if Roman decides to assert his dominance? We've watched Roman, every promo on SmackDown. He doesn't love the attention The Rock gets. He no. Do he doesn't love the introductions that Paul Heyman gives The Rock. He didn't like the fact that he had to stay in the ring. Remember, uh, the the it was two weeks ago. It was The Rock's first heel promo with the sleeveless uh, uh, Versace shirt on. When he said, I'm out of here because you didn't acknowledge me enough. And Paul Heyman said, you got, you got to stay. He's, stay. he's coming. He's coming. That Roman's not in that position usually. What if what if what if we look one step past this sort of, you know, well, The Rock's gonna turn on Roman because he's the real head of the table. What if Roman wants to remind The Rock that he's the real head of the table? And what if after WrestleMania that happens? What if Seth doesn't turn on Cody, but Cody loses, and we go to Seth versus Roman? We go to Punk versus Roman. McIntyre finally gets some revenge versus Roman. All these matches that we have lined up for Cody work just as well, if not better, for Roman Reigns. True, but on the other side of it, I mean, they have gold with Cody Rhodes. Can you remember? No. I already know your question, and they, the answer is they, no. The answer is no. There's ne I mean, since, again, and this is important, maybe even more important than the title, going back to the Hogan era, Hulk Hogan was the last babyface, and we don't like to use the lingo, but the last babyface that people cheered and that was so strong that people enjoyed cheering for him so much that they booed the bad guys. Yes. The good guys are getting cheered. The bad guys are getting booed. Cody Rhodes is the first guy since Hogan that when you look at arenas or when you go to arenas, I, I've gone to two shows with my seven-year-old son. We're both cheering for Cody. And you look around. Every kid is cheering for Cody. Every woman is cheering for Cody. Every man is cheering for Cody. I it's And I, that hasn't happened. I, I, think about that. There are people who said there's never going to be a, another John Cena. I feel like what Cody has done is surpassed John Cena. Because John Whoa. Cena, John Cena, the crowd was split when it came to John Cena. Yeah. When it comes to Cody, that is not the case right now. It's not. And I, I mean, John Cena did 10 years on top. I, listen, I'm not disrespecting John Cena. I'm talking about the love and respect from the crowd. What Cody is getting right now, mm -hmm. we haven't seen this since Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean... Yeah, and 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 Hogan by ninety, it was done. Yeah, it was like done. by nineteen ninety, people were tired of it. Like the older guys, the people who booed Cena in nineteen ninety, were booing Hogan. 
He had to turn heel. That's yeah. what's why the second run was so successful. But if that's all true, and it is, then I would ask you this. Don't you think that Cody is so popular to an unprecedented level that you go, nobody could survive losing to Roman Reigns twice at WrestleMania? I think that there's one person Whew. that could survive losing to Roman Reigns twice at WrestleMania. I think there is one person that could show up on Raw ready to lick his wounds and have to deal with whoever he has to deal with next. I think Cody Rhodes could absolutely not only survive losing again, but six months from now be even bigger, grow exponentially. Wow. And part of that is because those losses are so protected. I was shocked when Drew McIntyre beat him on Raw. Cody doesn't lose matches. And it's not even in an obnoxious way. But he doesn't lose matches. I mean, Sam, there's a part of me that wants to agree with you. And then there's a part of me that's saying, man, you got to strike while the iron's hot. And you got your brain and your heart arguing. I yeah, got your brain. Yeah, I got your brain. You got my brain. It's small, but I got it. Yeah, listen, it, it takes a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot. But you were able to do it. You are able to tap in there. Man, that's a big ask. That's a big Huge. ask because Huge. it's can you can you get a little bit more juice out of this bottle? Like we're getting a lot of juice <laughs> out of this bottle, but can we get even more? Yeah, to last us another year. And even is that it? Like, or do does it have to last a year? Does because because I, what I don't think is that the that the story now like we go another year and WrestleMania forty one is Roman versus Cody. Like, I think now we... Things a lot can change between now and then. There's no doubt 100%. about it. 100%. And Cody doesn't have to... If Cody's going to beat Roman, it doesn't have to be at WrestleMania. If WrestleMania 41's main event is going to be Roman and Rock, which I think a lot of us hope, think, whatever, there is this idea that either after or immediately before the Hogan record, that's when Cody gets the nudge. But do you think as a Cody fan... Cody Cry Baby, I heard it on The Rock's Instagram. I am a Cody. I, I would like to admit that I I wear it. I, I'm proud of it. I'm a Cody Cry Baby. As a pink robed Cody Cry Baby in your basement, idiot jack off. <laughs> According to The Rock. According I know, to The Rock. Hey, that's According the, the Rock. Rock's words. And not, not there's not a lot of people that doubt what The Rock has to say. He's 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 right more than he's wrong. Do you think that? Cody has to win it at WrestleMania. This is something that Bully and I have talked a lot about uh, on Busted Open. Bully believes he doesn't need to win it at WrestleMania. He actually believes that the win should happen at Madison Square Garden because that's where Dusty thought he won the championship against superstar Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. I believe it needs to happen at WrestleMania. So you, if it's not forty, it's got to be forty. And and you were there when Tommy asked Cody the question. Yep, holding my fat head. <laughs> I was. No, there's like a serious question. I was like uh, slowly moving it down. <laughs> there are times you and Tommy were in sync, and there are times you weren't. In sync. <laughs> but Tommy asked him the question. It's a great question. Does this happen? Hap, have to happen at WrestleMania? And Cody said, "I believe it does." Yeah, he did say that. He said that, and it makes this all more compelling, which is one of the reasons why he would say that. But I feel like I've set up a scenario along the way here that you've agreed with, although you haven't. Do you think, you didn't give me a straight answer, is Cody the one guy that could survive those two losses? I think he is the one guy okay. that could. I'm not saying that's that it should. I know. But he could. I still think he needs to win at WrestleMania 40. Okay. If Cody can survive the losses, if the Hogan record puts Roman on a different streak, in a different universe, mm -hmm. if... We can get the Cody moment back again. It might be a year from now. It might be whatever. 
but we'll never get the Roman beats Hogan's record again, ever. We've all we've agreed on all these things. And if we have just as much as many compelling opponents for Roman coming out of WrestleMania that we do for Cody, then make me an argument other than because the story that Cody Rhodes should beat Roman Reigns. I feel like right now, and I've gotten a good vibe, not just from the people calling the busted open or what we hear when we're watching the WWE on TV or in the arena. And I bump into a lot of fans and a lot of parents with kids. And I've never bumped into fans with the dynamic where the parents love Cody and the kids love Cody. It's exactly what's happening now. I mean, sometimes, you know, you catch lightning in the bottle. This could be one of those times where it's like, wow. Are, is this a show from a year ago? Because I heard all this a year ago. Th now it's on. Is, I, it, I think, is it more lightning in a bigger bottle no, this year? <laughs> you would, though, agree. That's how we started that. Cody's popularity is on a completely different level. You're Sam, you're just comparing his mm -hmm. popularity mm -hmm. to Hogan. And I said it was so good that he's the only person that could survive and flourish. I without... think it's taking a chance. That's taking a Are you that... risk averse? Oh, God, it's take <laughs> it's taking a big chance. Yes. Yes, I'll, taking, I'll give you that. It's taking a Big chance where I feel like you may not have to take that chance. You may not have to take it. You'd give up the whole Roman. You'd say this is the end of Roman's reign. I'm willing. To avoid the chance. I think so. Because that sounds like a risk to me. It, it, it may very well be. It's how how much you believe in. You told me your next thing for him is Cody versus Randy Orton in the undercard. I didn't say it was an undercard match, <laughs> I mean, and I and I don't think you're gonna see uh, you know uh, Rock and and Roman at every I'm, pay per view. What are you talking about? Backlash. Please, please, please. France is gonna get a treat. <laughs> please. This isn't the same type of situation. I. I just feel like, man, if you go with Cody, I think you have the face of your company for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Would you say Cody's been the face of the company? No. Who has? It's Roman. You don't think Roman can continue to be the face? It's a, it's, it's a, it's a company that doesn't rarely go down this road. Don't, don't you feel like they really want to go back to their comfort zone just a little bit here. I mean, here's the issue. Hey, 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 Sam, there's no, here's the thing. You and I could go back and forth and in Philadelphia after the main event of night number two of WrestleMania 40, you could point at me and say, <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> and I could point at you and I say, Sam, I told you so. Both of those scenarios are grand slam winning scenarios for the WWE and for the fans. I really do believe that. Like one is going to be it's like, true. Oh my God. Wow. And, and the momentum carries you or one of them is going to be a punch in the gut where you're like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe they, they went there. They actually went there and did that. They, but they're both winning scenarios. They put 55,000 in Perth, Australia, yep. Western Australia. No Roman Reigns. No Roman. Seven TV sellouts consecutively in a row. Half of them had the Rock and Roman. Half of them didn't. Sellout house shows. No Roman Reigns. Even when they're not selling out. Crazy attendance numbers. No Roman Reigns. Ratings are up. No Roman Reigns. So it sounds like if you could do all this, you can have your cake and eat it too. Your argument is the same reason that you saw disheveled Dave LaGreca <laughs> with his hair a mess wearing my wife's pink robe mm -hmm. on Busted Open mm -hmm. because it was like, oh, like The Rock is just going to walk in and say, all right, I'm in the main event at WrestleMania 40 when we don't need you because look at the figures across the board, attendance, pay-per-views, merchandise, everything.
Dave. This has been a lot of fun. And I feel like my goal was for you to walk in here confident as ever in WrestleMania and walk out just with a little tinge in your gut, like, oh, no, it might happen that, again. That's fine. You know what? And that's called being a diehard fan. Now, let me finish it on this, because I don't even know what the time is. I don't even know how long this is. Yeah, been. it's time to, it's time time to, to wrap time it up. Time to take it home. Time to take it home. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> it's been an incredible uh, hour with you here. And I'm going to say this, and I know you believe it in your heart of hearts, because I know you. I have no shame in my game as far as being a fan of Cody Rhodes. I'm passionate. I don't know why. When did it become not okay to be a fan? When did, when has that happened? I, when has that happened? It's, the the amount of hate that I get for being a fan of Cody Rhodes is like insane. And to me, we need to embrace that. I don't care who you're a fan of. Love this business the way it should be loved. They're giving you a product right now that is begging for you to be a fan. So enjoy it and celebrate it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do at WrestleMania 40. When Cody Rhodes is your new undisputed WWE Universal Champion. Or Roman Reigns, which is clearly the way it's going to go, Dave. Not Sam versus Busted Open. We got to do this again, my friend. 1,000%. All right, stay tuned. Who knows when it's going to drop? But definitely... Tweet at me. Tweet at Sam. We want to hear how tweet you felt. Tweet at Eddie Bersilli. Please. Big boss man, Eddie Bersilli. Tell us how you felt. For Sam Roberts, this is Dave LaGreca. We'll talk to you next time. Not Sam versus Busted Open. <laughs>